Hi everyone, welcome to the Missouri History Museum's Virtual Learning Day for February 2021. This video is part of our virtual craft room and our theme for this month is African American Arts and Culture. My name is Victoria and today we'll be creating portraits in the style of Kahinde Wiley's large-scale oil paintings. The story of the African American experience in the United States can and has taken many different art shapes and forms throughout history. Music, poetry, autobiographies, documentaries, and more. While paintings, drawings, and sculptures, also known as visual arts, can be used to tell a story using different styles, tools, shapes, and even colors. Take a look at this work by African-American painter Jacob Lawrence. This painting is called Great Migration, and it represents the period from around 1916 to the 1930s when millions of formerly enslaved African-Americans left southern states like Alabama and Louisiana to go north to cities like St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, and New York City for more job opportunities and more fair treatment. This painting is just one example other Black artists have also portrayed Black experiences, such as Carrie James Marshall, Kara Walker, and St. Louis na native Kababi Bayak. Now let's take a deeper look at Kahinde Wiley's art style. So, Wiley's art medium of choice is oil paint. We are going to use photographs today to recreate his paintings, but he paints these models by hand using oil paint in a very realistic way. He chooses to use oil paints because it's central to Western European culture. Think of all the kings, queens, and other royalty we have purchased of from Europe, and later on, wealthy families in the United States. The paintings portray dignity, and his work is motivated by his passion to represent normal African Americans in regal stances and regal poses that these kings and queens assume in their portraits. He uses oil paintings of contemporary African American subjects in poses that call back to those European and American portraits. They also call attention to the lack of representation in the visual art world. So in 2017, Kende Wiley visited St. Louis. He visited North City and Ferguson, and he had an interest in these places due to the 2014 protests. St. Louis was a hotspot for discussing race, injustice, and police violence in the U.S. And during this time, Wiley asked several African Americans he encountered to model for him. When interviewed later, he stated that in his art, he wants to slow down and take time to honor people from every little detail of their being, from their nails to the type of jeans they're wearing or the sort of shyness or boldness that their character embodies. So take a look at this picture. This is one of his pieces he displayed in his exhibit, Kehinde Wiley, St. Louis in 2018 to 2019. What do you notice? Now, take a look at this one. The stance is pretty similar, right? Now lastly, let's take a look at this painting. It is a portrait of King Charles I of England. It's the same pose, right? Even the hand. <laughs> now when I say large scale paintings, I mean they are big. The picture of the woman here, which is titled Charles I, 2018, measures six feet long by eight feet tall. <laughs> So now we're gonna create our own portraits in this style. They definitely won't be large scale, but we will try to incorporate the same elements Kehinde Wiley uses in his paintings, such as bright colors, flowers, and patterns. So first, you will want to identify a historical figure to be portrayed in this portrait style, or you can take a photo of yourself. Once you have your person, and a photo of them, you will want to gather your other supplies. So we have a few must-have items and we have a few optional. So you'll need scrapbook paper or tissue paper, a printed portrait or photograph. You will also need acrylic or washable paint and a little container to put the paint in. 
And lastly, you will need a black paper or some kind of foam to make a frame. And of course, you need your photo or a printer to print out the photo. So for our optional, you have a lot of options here. You can use something like bubble wrap, okra, celery. When they're sliced, they make a really cool and flowery type of stamp. You could also use something like a pencil eraser or a group of pencils stacked together like this. You can also use things like stickers or stamp and ink pad and really anything you have around your house. Mod Podge is also an optional if you want to seal everything in and double-sided tape as well as cardboard or a cereal box, something a little thicker. Okay, so let's get started. So first we'll want to take our cardstock or cardboard as the base of our painting. As our base, we will take our scrapbook paper here and glue it onto the cardboard just to make it a little bit stronger. All right, so please note if you use tissue paper here, you'll want to wait just a little bit longer to make sure it's completely dry. So now we will prepare our stamp if you're going to use a stamp. You can use any of the optional items provided in the material list to create a flower type of stamp. This one here I made by rubber band together seven different pencils to make a flower shape. Um, and you can also use something like okra or celery. Those create really cool shapes. So you'll want to dip your stamp into the paint or if you're using bubble wrap, you'll want to wrap, you want to paint the paint on to the bubble wrap, the texture side. Now, shake a little bit of paint off and you'll want to gently press and evenly press on your paper. And then after the paint dries, you can draw on stems or leaves. So try to do this in a pattern Okay, so that's one way. Like I said, there's so many different ways you can do this. So we'll prepare our photo next. So we wanna take our photo and cut out the main subject. You can choose to leave a small border or you can cut directly next to the outline of your portrait subject. So my image here is a Percy Green and he's holding up the arch. And I thought this was a pretty regal picture, so I picked this one. And Percy Green is an activist and social worker who was born in St. Louis. He is most well known for climbing up the side of the arch, which was under construction in 1964. He did this to protest against unfair hiring practices. The company in charge of building the Gateway Arch didn't hire one single black contractor or worker to help complete the project. So Percy Green and his friend Richard Daly took action. They made a plan to climb the arch as a protest and as a way to draw attention to the issue. So the two climbed up the construction ladder during the workers' lunch break, 125 feet in the air, and they stayed there for five hours. <laughs> It was a dangerous way to protest, but it gained a lot of national attention. I don't know about you, but I cannot imagine being in the air on a ladder for five hours. <laughs> so I have my photo and I have my background. And once your pattern is dry from your stamps or almost dry, you can glue down your photo or tape it using double-sided tape. All right, so after we do that, the lower half of the photo, or anywhere you want other than their face, you can continue to use a flower pattern on top of the photo as you see fit. All right, so let me glue down my photo. on my background here, okay? And so here, I've cut out little pieces of my scrapbook paper. All right, I have a lot of floral scrapbook paper. 
So I'm going to start gluing these down. You can glue them down as you see fit. I also have this nice border that I'm going to put on the bottom. So in almost every portrait, especially in the St. Louis Gallery, there are many flowers. So what do you think of when you see flowers? What do they remind you of? Something soft or delicate maybe? Well, Kahende uses these images to create a softer image. So let's see. I'm just gluing these down wherever it looks nice. And so if you use stamps, you just want to stamp on the photo wherever you like. And when you put the flowers on your portrait, it doesn't have to be the exact same pattern, just however you like. Alright. And lastly, you'll take your photo and you will glue it down on top of the black paper. And this will create a frame. Okay, so I'm going to put it right in the middle. And ta-da! <laughs> there we have our portrait of Percy Green using Kahinde Wiley's portrait style. Now, take a look at this example that we use. So here, we use stickers to create this portrait of Maya Angelou. So, like I said, almost anything that you have at home. And here is another example I just drew on flowers in a pattern with the stems. Okay, so for more inspiration, be sure to check out Kahinde Wiley's St. Louis exhibit, and that's under our description box. So it's also a lot of fun to look at the titles of his work and then search the name of the piece in Google. And for the St. Louis collection in particular, some of the poses were actually inspired by artifacts in the St. Louis Art Museum. <laughs> so, we would love to see what you all have created. So be sure to tag us at MHS Learn, and as always, keep making history. Bye.